Hello, and welcome to the Milkwas Productions No Budget Indie Blueprint. Today we're going to talk about accumulation. Now, accumulation is something that you're going to want to do as a filmmaker because the whole process is a long process. It's a marathon. And the more you do to prep yourself slowly and just accumulate things, it's going to benefit you and you're not going to feel as overwhelmed as you, you might. So here are a couple of tips that I'm going to throw at you. The first one is to accumulate knowledge. Now, accumulating knowledge, if you don't know how to make a film, would be very important, of course. And there are a lot of resources that you can take advantage of as a uh, no-budget indie filmmaker. The first one is to go out and find some seminars, find some workshops, go to an acting workshop, go to a couple, network while you're there, uh, meet actors, Introduce yourself and talk about what you're trying to accomplish and get some phone numbers or some email addresses so you can have that in your database for later when you send out a casting call or whenever you're gonna do that for your film. Hit up a producer's workshop. There are several in our area that you may spend 10, 20, $50, depending on who's coming through from LA to teach you about how to make a film. So go to those seminars, talk to people, network, take notes and figure this out. Second source might be YouTube or online. There are a lot of resources. All you have to do is Google or Bing what you want to do nowadays. Get on YouTube and uh, type in your question like how, how to run a camera or how to do cinematic color correcting or how do I cast a film or if you Google this and found this, hey, there are a lot of resources out there. So go online, try and find some resources that will benefit you and answer your questions and I will leave some links in the description below. Third resource might be podcasts. If you have long commutes, or if you have any driving time or you're walking, you have a dog walk time like I do. I have like an hour a day where I walk my dog or I'm out with my dog. Um, I listen to podcasts. I listen to filmmaking podcasts and I will leave some of those in the description below. But those really helped me, uh, help light a fire inside of me, got me pumped. It always helps me when I listen to people who are doing things that I want to do. It helps me get revved up and fired up. And I'm sure that that will do that for you. So, and of course you're gonna want to read some books on filmmaking. There are some simple ones, some easy ones, and these will get you fired up too. I'll leave a couple in the description below. There are a couple that I can think of off the top of my head that I own. Uh, I own one from Sidney Lumet and I own one from uh, Robert Rodriguez. And uh, those are easy reads. They, they give anecdotes and you can kind of see the process of how they make their movies and their styles. They're contrasting and different. One comes from a big studio system, one came from the bottom up, and now is on top of things. Get on Amazon, uh, I'll leave some links in the description below. You can find them for used, just buy them used, spend 10, 20 dollars on books, and start to read. In summation, you wanna accumulate knowledge. Accumulate, just, just uh, accumulate knowledge. Probably through osmosis, just lay on a book. <clears throat> Alright, so now that you're accumulating knowledge and you're building that fire within you, you're going to want to slowly accumulate gear. Now there are a lot of options out there to accumulate gear, so here are a couple things that you're of course going to need. One, you're going to want to have a camera. There are so many options out there right now for cheap cameras that will get you a cinematic quality that you are wanting, and you can learn to use them uh, by watching YouTube tutorials. So here's uh, a couple of suggestions and a couple of lens suggestions. First suggestion, I think this will totally take care of everything that you're gonna need on the camera side. Get a Canon T3i. Now you could probably go on Craigslist and find a used Canon T3i with a couple of batteries and maybe even a lens for about $300 to $500. This is a fantastic camera. I used it to shoot my Captain America spoof. Bubbles? Is that you? Who the hell is Bubbles? And I love the image quality. I owned a T4i uh, after I, I used this T3i and I didn't like it as much, but the T3i 
For some reason, I just really like the image quality. It'll do everything that you need it to. Uh, another suggestion, Sony has some really good cameras. They have an A6300 that will work really well for you. If you know how to use the Sony system, then that, that might be great. Their lenses are a little bit more expensive, so you might take that into account. Canon's lenses are a little bit more readily available and their, their lower end lenses will get you exactly what you need. Um, and only cost you maybe $200, $150, $200. I personally have right now, and I'm shooting on a Panasonic GH5. I really love this camera. I've shot several projects on it, and I've shot, I shot all of Lake 7 and the Golden Gun on this camera. It shoots 4K and has a 10-bit color space, and that's why I got it, because I really wanted the colors that this gives. The lower end cameras give you an 8-bit signal, which is totally fine. It's nothing that you need to concern yourself with. The more bits you have and the bigger the file size is, the harder it is to work on a computer. And the GH5 has really beefy files. They're pretty big. Go ahead and find a used camera and a used lens. You can get a used cam a Canon lens, 18 to 55 millimeter, or an 18 to 135, which will probably cover everything that you're, you're needing. Get those things, get them used. Just make sure that you know they're functioning and not broken when you, you buy them off of people. Get a couple of batteries and an SD card, and you, sh you basically got everything you need on the camera end. Now you're probably gonna want to put the camera on something, um, a tripod, of course, you can buy for 30 to 50 bucks, or you can buy a high-end one for, I don't know, 300, 500. I've seen them for a thousand. You might not need that, you probably don't. I, right now, have a tripod that I bought 12 years ago. It's a little beat up, but it holds the camera up and that's all you need sometimes. Other stabilization systems include having a fly cam or a glide cam and you can balance and put the camera on that and get some really cinematic and really nice movements off of that. Uh, and you're also going to want to have like a cage or a shoulder rig, something that you can put the camera on and you have a handle right here and a shoulder mount and you can get, um, this, is, this is a basic camera thing that uh, you'll want to have. So get a shoulder mount, that might cost you anywhere from 80 to $130. The one that I bought that was kind of a generic version, a new year generic version, it had a uh, follow focus on it, which was really nice. And I thought, hey, this is pretty good for $135. So I'll leave some links and you can check some of these out. So go ahead and accumulate those things. Two more things that you're going to need. The first is a boom microphone. Now, boom mic, you probably heard of a boom mic. Boom mic's probably about this big, this big, or this big, I don't know. That has a, uh, a directional pattern that kind of cones out, and you hold it. You've probably seen these on sets. They're covered in a big, what's called a dead cat or a blimp to stop wind from hitting the microphone. These are directional mics that help pick up sound, and they're attached on to a boom pole. So you're gonna want to accumulate those things. Those can be expensive. I bought mine. For about $300, it has a, a, a blimp and a dead cat on it. It works really well outside. It cuts down all noise. And then I had to buy a microphone to put into the boom pole, and that cost me about $300. I have a Sennheiser microphone, and it's about a mid-grade microphone. It works really well. You'll also want to get an XLR cable. Um, I recommend getting a 10 foot to 20 foot somewhere in there. XLR cable, maybe even a 30 foot. Get two of them, because maybe somebody might step on it or it might get run over by a wheel of some kind and then you have a cut cord. So maybe get two of those. Um, you can find them on Amazon for pretty cheap. You might get a higher end one, spend a little bit more money on that because the signal that comes through those cords is very important and you don't want any hums or noise inside of your sound, go ahead and maybe spend a little bit more on that. And last but not least, you want an audio recorder. There are a lot of really good options out there that will help you get really clean and very good sound. The two that I have used on my films, I used a Zoom H4n on Whip Brawler. We used that and a boom mic that was borrowed. I also own and am recording right now on a Zoom H6. I don't think there's an N on that one. But this one has four audio inputs. It does everything I need it to do, and the signal is pretty clean. You can also get a Tascam, which are about in the same price range, but do a little research online. Go on YouTube, and if you find an audio recorder that you want to research, look up pros and cons. 
and just watch some reviews on those specific audio recorders. You might gain some insight on how they function and what how to use them. That is definitely something you're going to want. And if you want a little added bonus tip, go ahead and get yourself a external battery pack for your Zoom so you don't have to continue to cycle AA batteries out of the recorder because that can be a little ha bit of a hassle. Go on Amazon or eBay and find yourself a battery pack, something that uh, you know works with that specific model of audio recorder, and that will save you some time on set. Now that you've accumulated the vast majority of the things that you need to film a film with, maybe find a light or two, find a couple of lights. The LED lights right now are so cheap and so affordable, and they come up with tripod stands. Go out and get some some lights. You can get on B&H Photo, Adorama, or Amazon, and you can buy two or three lights for $200, $300. It's insane. Do that. Go ahead and grab a light or two or three, you're not going to regret it. You're always going to want uh, to light your subject. I have a light on me right now, of course. So find yourself some lights. And that's all of your basic gear that you want to accumulate. So you're going to want to accumulate gear over six months to a year because it takes it easy on your pocketbook. If you buy everything all at once, if you can, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. I found it easier to do it this way. I accumulated gear over time. I bought it maybe a little bit with uh, every other paycheck when rent wasn't due and I didn't have to pay on my car. That's something you're gonna wanna do. Oh, and get a couple of SD cards. Get two or three SD cards. 32 gig to 64 gig. Those are pretty cheap right now too. Go ahead and do that and accumulate your gear. Third thing I wanted to talk about was resources. You wanna accumulate some resources because you're gonna need these people or places in order to make your movie. Accumulating people is a pretty easy process, but you kinda of want to weed out the people who aren't going to stick with you through the entire process. You're going to want to accumulate producers, maybe a director if you're not going to direct your own stuff, a cinematographer or somebody, a camera operator, somebody that knows how to run the camera, camera unless you are going to be running the camera yourself and figuring that out, a few. You will want to accumulate actors, maybe even an editor, a composer. You're gonna want, just make a list of names. Get that Google Doc out that I talked about earlier. Start to type in people that, that are going to help you on your filmmaking journey. Uh, have conversations, tell them what you're doing, and if they want to be involved, go ahead and use your instincts and, and get involved with them. Uh, you don't have to. If you have a bad feeling about them and think they're going to be flaky, or if they talk too much, if they talk themselves up, maybe you might, you might not want to be in business with them. You might not want to work with them. So accumulate people, get those contacts going, talk about your film. This is a marathon, guys and gals. It's a lot to take in. It's a lot to do all at once. So just accumulate everything. Accumulate your knowledge, accumulate your gear, ac accumulate your resources. And as you do that and push forward, you're gonna have an easier time accomplishing your goals of making a no budget indie. All right, go out there, get some knowledge, gear, and resources. I'll talk to you soon.